folks welcome to this exciting adventure where today we start next to an old bit of scottish history right here today we've come to the mains of dun thrashing mill site and a cool bit of history that's left here at the mains of dun is this old water wheel in this inside this area here this is the old water wheel pit and like the old wheel's still in there it's absolutely massive like it's full of water in there now but this would have been See, there's still some of the wooden paddles inside it. It's not too easy to record through the mesh here, like, but you can get an essence of it. When I saw it here, folks, I thought it's a cool way to start this video. We'll come and have a look at this. I think there would have been, like, a, a little dam and, like, a sluice and stuff at the other side of the main, breaking the Montrose Road. Yeah, this is just along the road from the bridge that you saw in the last episode, folks. And it is a cool bit of history. This here is like a deep void, but which is flooded out now. And the fact is, we can just see the top of the wheel in there, which shows you how deep that actually is. There's just tons and tons of water in there. At one time, that water would have flowed away out of there. Well, they're saying that, that wheel is almost as tall as a double decker bus. Wow. It is incredible. And look, 1788, yeah. the threshing mill was invented by a Scottish person called Andrew Meikle. His invention revolutionised agriculture at the time by greatly speeding up corn, the corn milling process. The mains of Dun Threshing Mill was built in the mid-19th century. It had an overshoot type of water wheel whereby the water from the barn was channelled to the wheel and it fell into a series of 48 buckets mounted at its rim. So it is interesting to see, folks. This is what it would have looked like in the picture there. The shadow's not too good today with the, the light behind it, but... Yeah, it is cool to see what's left of it. Another small piece of abandoned history. And I think one time there may have been like a shed or something here with the actual mill in it, where they'd be milling the barley and the wheat. And now it's just a car park here for the Montrose Nature Reserve. It is cool that the old wheel's still there. In this beautiful Scottish landscape here. This must have been the wall of the mill. It's just overgrown now with weeds and stuff like that. I don't know if I mentioned it at the start, folks, but we're joined by the channel DJ once, once again in this adventure. And yeah, we're away ahead somewhere else now to continue this video, so... Yeah, we'll see you there. Look at this folks, this is the second location in this video and here we are at some World War II air raid shelters which is located at Stracathro airfield, the old abandoned airfield which we explored in great detail. If you remember me and the channel DJ were exploring Stracathro airfield, I'll put a link at the end of this video. Check it out, this is one of the old air raid shelters, wow. Oh, I've left my light in the car. Check this out, folks. Real history right here. This is so cool. Either an emergency escape hatch. It's either an escape hatch or a, just a shooting position. But kind of a thing, it's like it's meant to have had more cement originally. Yeah. Because it's got the rebar. Wow, folks, look at this brand new location. So the other end is repeat. It was blocked off halfway, eh? Yeah. And at one time they probably had benches and stuff in the war. Down the side of this. Yeah. This is so cool, folks. And, and it would have had a door or something here. Wow. And what you can see, the old door frame here. It's got the original green army paint on it. You can see the rebar again in this suit. Yeah, and it would have had a wee door here. And look, it's got the wooden, the marks from the wooden panelling when the cement was poured onto it. But another interesting point, it would have had a big door out here. Look at the steps, little stone steps. 
we are out documenting this history, folks. It's right at the edge of this person's farmyard, and we'll come with the greatest respects to the landowner. We're just literally documenting this bit of history here in Angus, wartime history. And here, look at this, see what these would have had. They often had another door, metal one mounted on here, and the reason it was sloped like that is so it was never like blasted open. It would always blast closed. See, that could just be later farmyard wall right there. We'll take a look at this other little bunker here because it's, it's at the edge of the property and we're not wanting to go traipsing about the boys' farmyard. Some of these old buildings here are military buildings. See how there's a cement like lookout tower yeah. of some sort in the middle? That would be a real interesting building to have a look at. This is so cool, folks. I love finding new bits of history like this. Check the character of this one. Look at this, folks. Never seen before on the channel World War II history. Yeah. This one's flooded. But it's still cool to come and document them. Any conditions. I can't even see where I'm going right now. Child DJ's got a torch. Wow, we're going to have to go in. I'm going to stand on these stones. It's worth it. I can't actually see how deep the water is. Yeah, it's real adventurous, folks. Look at this. This has got an original wonder. Wow, and this cement piece. That's really cool. Look at this folks, so this would have been like an emergency escape or it could have been like a lookout point. Wow, it's just a person in the room. Yeah, it's corroded away. Yeah. And there's mountain bones. Wow. I've never seen one with a ladder like this in it before. No. It's so cool to keep documenting this folks. The shape of these ones is different to all the other ones that I've been in. The condition is just so good. And look at the way the cement slopes in. I believe it's probably a complete cement structure. Like, yeah, the one every day, people will be cement, I think. Yeah, I've never seen one of these folks. So, so cool. I'm so glad that we're still. See, sometimes you can see historic graffiti from like the wartime. Sometimes they would write stuff. That's all midges sitting up there. You see those black dots? They're all midges. Incredible, folks. And it's not actually too easy to walk here because it's flooded out. Wow. Look at that. World War II stuff, some of my favourite folks to explore. I can't believe how perfectly smooth this cement is. There's a swallow's nest up there now. I've never seen one either with the rebar like that exposed. It's like it almost was going to get another layer of cement on it. Yeah. But then, because this was a training airfield here, it might have not had the same level of protection. And once again, we've got the original little door frame. We're like, I don't know if that's the original door frame. There might have been another one there before, but. Look at that, the old, you can see where the grain of the wood has been. It's incredible that it's, it stays like that. And this is going to come off at one point now. Eh? Yeah, it's just on its last legs. It's ready just to fall right off of there. That's how it's so cool to video this. There's another bunker we explored, uh, the last time we explored Scathrow Airfield. And we found, remember, somebody had scored in when they had built it. The name of the soldier that built it. We'll just walk right around this, have a look. These look more like yeah. different. Th been, yeah, because there's sections here of cement. They're really, they're, they're really, really small sections. They're like flat pack. See, there's bigger sections here. Aye, they're like, what's that? Seven or eight inch wide sections yeah. cemented together. And then obviously there's been a heap of them here. I think there's some at the other side which have been used as like pig styes and stuff. 
And yeah, you can see the shape of that. It's probably been tapered, so you could continually build it as long as you wanted it. Yeah, and then look at this bit here. This must. This is where the ladder is connected in. Look. Yeah. The ladder comes through the cement, and then they bend it over. Wow, I've never ever seen that before. And even the hatch itself is like different sections just cemented together. Because this was a training airfield as well, they might have been training people to even like build these bunkers and stuff. This airfield went right along to the far side of those fields in the distance, like it was absolutely massive. And there is some other interesting buildings there with cement, but I'm can for respect to the landowner and the farmer, we're not gonna go in to his farmyard and axe. That's, that's now what we're about on this channel, folks. But yeah, like, it is cool to document the history that we can see here. It's always worth it. And you can see here the sun bolts from the inside there through. I'm not sure what that's been. And another thing, like, I wonder if they had camo net and stuff over it originally. It is interesting, folks. Interesting history once again. So there you go folks, another bit of World War II history here at Strakathro Airfield. And it's cool to keep putting more of these pieces of the puzzle together to this. It was a training aerodrome, built in 1941, and it was operational until 1948 training. Because I'm sure they did a lot of low level approach or something, for, because there was always strong side winds at this runway. Like they used to use that for training or something like that, and one time there was actually a crash of a hurricane plane in that field over there and the pilot was killed but most of like world war ii airfields it was like that but all the evidence around here you can see how it was built at that time and we found scored into the bunker 1941 mine at the far side yeah. and the names yeah. of the soldiers that were building it and like yeah here we are today it's abandoned it's just little bits like this now that remain Little bits of history just getting lost to nature and time, folks. And here we are documenting it. But yeah, I'll end this one here. It's been a cool adventure. It's goodbye for me. Goodbye for the channel DJ. And we'll catch you very soon once again for the next adventure.